News. It's look at the career of Gary Lineker now as we bring you 1991's FA Cup semi-final between Tottenham and Arsenal. You're watching ESPN Classic. Tremendous reception for the two teams for a contest of pride and not a little prejudice. A private argument of North London with overtones of doubles and finance to be played out before a world audience. The match is being watched on television in over 30 countries. Positive selections by the two managers. David Howells was out for ten games before he came back against Norwich in midweek. Paul Gascoigne, with the stomach operation, missed only five. The unlucky man, I suppose, is the Moroccan, Naeem. Vinny Samways getting the midfield place. Naeem joining Paul Walsh on the substitute bench. If George Graham thought about a third central defender, David O'Leary in the end, he decided not to include him, David is on the substitute bench with Perry Groves, instead Graham six to his wide men, Merson and Limpar in Arsenal's attacking formation. Bits of confetti it would seem all over the pitch, Just bits of paper, it's a pretty raw day, Exactly. A day of Browning out to be in England now that April's there. It's a touch of winter about it. First field of the ball, and then a second field of the ball for the Norwegian, Eric Torstebet. And the wind was against the kick. The header was by Limpart. Brandon Howe. And the free kick is in his favour. Vanden Howe, who wears number three, playing at right back, with Justin Edinburgh wearing two on the left side, a position that he's really made his own, Edinburgh, in this cup run. First touch for that fellow whose name I can't remember for a moment. It wasn't the friendliest of balls from a colleague that Winterburn was given. Stewart. Stewart, whose brother was hoping to have been short a place here at Wembley for Witten Albion, but he's got to wait for the replay. Challenged by uh, Samways. Swede is down. Steve Bold joining Smith and Campbell forward. Tony Adams arriving a little later. Out by Mabbott. A little bit short. And Lineker with two defenders around him. And the ball had gone out before it hit Lineker, apparently. Howes have made a forward run, number five. Nobody seemed to notice him. Chase over for Paul Allen. Gascoigne is in the area. So now is the ball. Howell's coming in. And Gascoigne complaining. Looked to see whether the linesman's flag was up, but in fact I think that was a verdict of the referee. So, first thoughts from Trevor Brooking. Well, tactically, uh, I think uh, 
perhaps George Graham's selection was based on the belief that uh, Gary Lineker would play up by himself, and that is the case, so that's the reason I think he's gone for the flat-back four. And uh, from Spurs' selection point of view, filling up a five-man midfield, Paul Stewart more the anchor man, Paul Gascoigne given quite a free roll. The, the one slight tactical switch Terry Venables has made is, in fact, uh, David Howe playing on the left side of midfield, almost... Uh, pushing up on Lee Dixon, who likes to get forward, and that be, I think, something he's going to keep an eye on Dixon's forward runs. Howells is now forward of Edinburgh. It's nicely done, Alan channels just in time, Gascoigne is offside. The flag is up, Gascoigne was offside. But I think the referee is, in fact, just going to give the goal kick. Gascoigne wanted a corner, but there was just a moment then when Alan thought he might be at the races. It was Adams who got the challenge in, it was a very important one. You can see the problems caused if Spurs players run deep from midfield, it will combat the, the idea that Arsenal like to play a flat back form, a push up for offside, but if you get people running from deep situations like that, there are going to be occasions where they will break that offside tactic down. Stewart, Adams flying through the air. One by Lee Dixon. Second time. Allen. The early attacking ideas coming from Tottenham. First time Gascoigne's been able to dwell on the ball, faced then by Paul Davis. Tottenham seem to be finding quite a lot of space. But that wasn't the best of passes. But the challenge was a little late on Stewart, which may have been the reason. And then the free kick just left of centre. Gascoigne, who's free kick. Stewart met against Blackpool, started the Tottenham scoring, and he scored in every round after that. Made the first, and involved in everything since. Mabbott has gone forward with Stewart to the right, Lineker and Howes to the left. Is Gascoigne going to have a crack? He is, you know. Oh! Schoolboy's own stuff. Oh, I bet even he can't believe it. Is there anything left from this man to surprise us? That was one of the finest free kicks that this stadium has ever seen. Seaman got his hands, couldn't hold. Spurs have the lead. Paul Gascoigne, the scorer. Well, what an opening to the semi-final. Uh, I mean, it was 30, 35 yards out, and I, I thought when he ran up and he appeared to be shooting, I thought that's a bit optimistic from that lane, but he hit it superbly. I still think David Seaman will be a bit disappointed because he got a hand to it, and uh, you feel a, a goalkeeper of, of his class having from that distance and getting the hand to it, should have pushed it out. But all credit to that man, Paul Gascoigne, he's done it again. The goal in the fifth minute. David Seaman, <laughs> what uh, Lineker's trying to point to. I think he wants it to go the other way to Howes. He does for the flick on. Lineker! Well, it was certainly hit. I wonder if it uh, surprised him as much as it surprised us. A moment to concentrate even more, and your side is in front. Challenge there, who was a little bit late, Limpa and Vanden Howe, and suddenly the referee is needing eyes in more than the usual place in his anatomy. understand why they have Howells 
Certainly pushing well up on Lee Dixon, which will limit his attacking abilities. And again, the challenge was a little bit venomous and a little bit poorly timed. Stewart. Enjoyed playing in midfield, Stewart. Nice little touch from Gascoigne. Alan was onside, plenty forward. Mavet trying to get there. Smith, it's gone in. Lineker got the final touch. Alan Smith was back in his own six-yard area, but that was the flick that did it. There, put Alan away. Howes was forward, Mavet was forward, Smith was back. Lineker with a little stub toe. Smith wins in the air, Campbell, it's the first time that combination has worked, Limpa, and he got in a clean shot, very easy to save him up here, but how close was he to hitting it first time, it would have worried uh, the Norwegian goalkeeper rather more, I suspect, if he had. Third meeting between these two sides in the FA Cup, the previous two were in the third round, one victory apiece, Merson, First time he's had a run, Smith. Uh, he tried the dummy, but there wasn't enough pace on the ball for it to reach Campbell. Samways, Lineker out to the left. Storming run being made down the middle, which helped by Edinburgh. Samways involved for the second time. Edinburgh still forward. Samways. Well struck. Body all behind it by Seaman. Spurs breaking in units much better than Arsenal. Uh, as soon as that attack broke down, three of them broke in a triangle, and uh, it was Vinny Zemways who went past Tony Adams easily there and got in a shot with his right foot. Vanden Hal. Not one of the best passes he's made. He's been to Wembley three times in the final and not been successful. Merson, free kick against Zemways. Again, the challenge was a bit late and a bit harsh. And the referee's uh, having to write a book here. Yeah? That's the only one I would uh, disagree with a bit. Vinny Semway is not renowned for his tackling, and uh, it was a little bit late, but he didn't follow through on it, uh, unlike the other ones, which I, I totally agreed with. Davis. Bowl is forward. That it was by Sedgley. Dixon presumably for a long one. Four Arsenal players in the 18-yard area. Merson just outside, as is Davis, as is Thomas. Looking for Bold. One by Stewart. Dixon. Smith underneath it. And an infringement in front involving Mavert and Campbell. Well, we've had half an hour. And Tottenham's goals both came in the first ten minutes. Edinburgh. Samways having a good match. And what Tottenham player at this juncture is not. Good recovery by Adams, but only to Gascoigne. Allen, Vanden Howe on the overlap. Beat both Lineker and Gascoigne. One by Edinburgh. Same ways, Lineker, it's a bit short. Well won by Gascoigne. Back again to Lineker. Adam to the right, same way as the other way. Good challenge again by Adams. Termination from Paul Allen. Tottenham might be a bit disappointed they didn't make rather more of that. As there were options either way. Gascoigne winning the ball.
Samuels. More freedom than anybody, Samuels. He's gone on a run. Lineker back to Edinburgh. Nobody tracked him. Paul Davis. Bowles. Limpar. Winterburn on the overlap. More promising. Campbell Smith. I think the picture says it all, doesn't it? Uh, best move, unquestionably, for Arsenal. Winterburn, the first occasion he's managed to get clear down that left. Good cross, a full back. And Alan Smith having to turn to hit it. Just popped up a little bit, but uh, there was no conviction on the shot and underneath it and it uh, clipped over the crossbar and I think Arsenal supporters will be very disappointed because uh, you do feel perhaps they do need a goal before half time. That wasn't the best of clearances so it fell back a little bit. That's a good ball by Thomas. Well it looked it for a moment but Mavert was quickly quick to see the danger. Winterburn again. Limpa. Winterburn and Gascoigne and a stumble. And Paul Gascoigne at the moment paying great tribute to the medical profession. One thing uh, Spurs will have to be a little bit aware of is, is Paul Gascoigne and David Howe being out several weeks and you just wonder in the last half an hour of a game like this uh, whether they'll begin, begin to feel the pace but uh, at present of course they've got a nice two goal cushion. Dixon away from Howes for the first time and Howes not managing to get back. That's a goal kick. So there might just be the nagging thought in Terry Venable's mind that really his team have had the opportunities to put this match beyond reach. But then having taken the gamble of playing Howes and Gascon, even he would have been delighted, I'm sure, Terry Venables, that uh, they're two goals up. As you say, it could have been more, uh, but at present, I'm sure he'll settle for that scoreline. Adams, Smith, Sergio so started to go with him and then goes back, Mabbott, saves the corner but gives the ball to Campbell, might have been better than settle for the corner. Very confident, of course, Vett. Mind you, that sort of hanging cross, uh is ideal for a goalkeeper to be able to make ground and take the cross uh, when you get out wide I, I always feel the the ball whipped in at paces the one that causes the goalkeeper far more problem Stake by Adams this is Howells a very in and out first half the Arsenal captain Smith and Mabbott Merson, Limpar, Campbell, blocked on the edge, referee shakes his head. Davis, Dixon. Smith didn't know where it was, wouldn't have got it anyway. Three minutes away from half time. Yeah. 
Seven goals in the last eight games for Campbell. Arsenal wouldn't mind where the goal comes from. In some need. Here's Campbell again. Challenged by Mabbott. Gascoigne. And he's composing thoughts for half time. Good stuff again from Tottenham. Almost an embarrassment of options. Another great movement that was uh, Lineker back to Gascoigne. Vinny Samways who's done a lot of good work in this first half, making the run and again it opened up the Arsenal defence. The final ball just letting them down. semi-final of an all-London variety. Arsenal have been involved in all of them and they won the previous three, twice against Chelsea and the most recent in 78 against Leighton Orient. But they found Tottenham a real handful in this first half. And there's Limpar. It's been said that his form hasn't been quite what it was earlier in the season. They need him to find it. Long spell without scoring, Limpa, which has an effect. Gascoigne hasn't shirked anything. In fact, he's invited people to give him the ball. Back a few moments ago when he gave the ball back to Torsved, he then ran 20 yards to collect it again. Smith. Feel for offside, it's not. It's curled, Smith! He scored! Dixon's cross, Smith's head. And Arsenal have got what they desperately needed. A goal before half-time. It was a good cross. Wind, I suspect, held it up a little bit. Smith rose the highest, and Torsvet who was quite close to his line, found it beating him on his left side. See what a difference uh, a cross at speed makes. The goalkeeper just came a couple of yards, knew he couldn't get near, and Alan Smith soared superbly. Did well to get the power to beat Torsford from there because uh, he was still quite a distance out. And that is a crucial goal before half-time. What looked seconds ticking away, and suddenly there's a glimmer of hope for the Arsenal side. Well, you would never have judged that from the expression on George Graham's face. Change the conversations a bit in the dressing room. You know, good Tottenham looking back on opportunities, as I suggested earlier, that they had that could have put the match beyond Arsenal's reach. Suddenly they've got a real fight on their hands but then that's what they expected. A few more words from Ray Lewis. He's allowed a minute in the main for the lectures and bookings. Entertaining first half. Some wonderful football from Spurs with Gascoigne at the heart of it. He scored the first, was involved in the move from which Lineker scored the second. But Terry Venables, who up until a couple of moments ago felt that he would go off with his side two in front, has seen George Graham's side come back with a typical goal, Dixon's cross and Smith's header.
18 was his shirt number at Everton. 16 was his age when he made his debut. 13 was the number of goals in his first Premiership season. 13,000 was the number of pounds a week he earned in his first contract. 1,225 are the number of calories in his favourite meal. Welcome to Wayne Rooney's number wonderland, Wayne's World. Sunday at 10 on ESPN Classic. So I was the Marie for on the way down. Smooth as you like. Had to stop a couple of times for you, no way. Too many fizzy drinks. I was just a fairer. Don't know what we'd do with them to amount of junk they insist on bringing. Right. Think a little drink should have, don't you? Lovely to see them playing so well together. Remember last year? Don't. It's not a bad life, is it? I think I might have a little kip. Might join you. Mariva and Zafira, clever family cars from Vauxhall. Fly higher with the Rich for Life scratch card. Rush hour at home again. Children, pets, guests. In no time, your carpet looks filthy. The proof? Feels bad, doesn't it? Well, now Vanished Power Foam makes carpet cleaning fast and effective without a soaking wet carpet. <sighs> Simply spray on, work in, and vacuum off. Look at the difference. Wow, that's fantastic. Whether it's the living room, hallway, or stairs, Vanished Power Foam is the easy way to bring the high traffic areas of your carpets back to life. Vanish. Trust pink, forget stains. And now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. But more, much more than this. I've been at They say the best things in life are free. And I think they mean bird song, rainbows, and stuff. But sometimes it's the free things in life that are best. It's nice to get something for nothing. So BT are offering free UK evening and weekend calls for a year. Call 0800 200 700. Here we are. Uh, can I take your coat? Just a coffee. Everything was as quick as Rustler's. You're New so Rustler's hot. Chicken Tikka Nam. When is a good deal not a good deal on home insurance? When they don't reward you for buying more. At Direct Line, we'll give you 50% off your home contents cover when you buy it together with our buildings insurance. And we'll give you free annual travel cover for all the family. That's better. Direct Line. A good deal. Better. At Specsavers, you're in expert hands. Our stores are owned by qualified opticians who'll give you a thorough professional eye test. We have a huge choice of stylish designer frames. And if you're over 60, there's 30% off glasses. That's 30% off frames and superb Pentax lenses. Spec savers. You can have it all. Mariva and Severa available with 0% finance over four years. From Vauxhall. Away we go on the second half. Arsenal attacking the goal. To our left. And here's Winterburn.
slip by Stewart. Good wide ball by Campbell. And an excellent piece of full-back play to deny another full-back. Done well, young Edinburgh. Uh, uh, playing in a Wembley semi-final like this, he's coped, uh, as I say, extremely well, because he wouldn't have uh, sampled such an atmosphere before. Yes, they don't quite get 80,000 at Roots Hall, do they? I think they'd like to, though. I suppose we better mention that is South Ender uh, for those that don't support... Uh, the Essex club, but uh, they look as if they could be in the second division next year. Howells, beaten to it by Adams. Sedgley, Allen, Gascoigne, elaborate dummy, good tackle. He's made three or four like that. Aggressive but fair, timing excellent. Tony Adams. Sedgley, Campbell stole half a yard. Sedgley just got the foot. Solid challenge with uh, Merson. But the referee has given a free kick and indicated that the ball was uh, pushed along with the arm. One of the curiosities with the referee, Ray Lewis, is that for him this is a bit of a rehearsal too because he'll be back next week. I think that suggests that the League Cup final is now being played too late in the season, but that's only a personal view. Allen trying to get between two. Lineker. Sam Ways did well. And withstood the pressure of Davis. Needs support wide, gets it. Challenge on him was late, but the referee allowed play to continue. Tottenham not with quite the flow that they had in the first period. Fine ball by Merson to Winterburn. And difficult, Campbell. And Thomas was nearest in the end. There's Winterburn who's making those forward runs that helps the Arsenal attack so much. And there's Sedgley just hooking his left leg. Not sure he intended to play it back to his goalkeeper, but that's where it ended up. But uh, Arsenal are getting forward in numbers much better. Neatness from Arsenal. It's coming down to Winterburn. Still Winterburn. It's over the top. Winterburn got forward so effectively in the second half. He's making a, a lot of problems here. Just touches it over. Heads it over then Gary Mabbott, who try, try, probably could have done with the right foot there. And he has to stretch with his favoured left and... Uh, Lift it over Torstead, but the goal as well. But uh, he's getting some good angles, getting into attack, not worrying so much about his defensive duties, which is Arsenal have to do if they're going to get back into this match. Smith again. Gascoigne. Hasn't been involved anything like as much. Three kickers against him. Adams, Bold, Campbell and Smith in a line. Bold and Adams make the first dummy run. Now they go again. Away not hugely well by Howells. And Smith... Tottenham are all pushing out, and they nearly got caught. 
As you say, they came out to play the offside. Smith timed his run well. It, it was a bit unfortunate for him. It's one of those through balls that just hangs in the air, and there was a big groan from Arsenal supporters who, who thought he might have done better, but he, he couldn't head it from there, and he couldn't volley it, and he had to try and knock it on, and that gave the opportunity for Spurs to get back. Arsenalville, two of the midfield players are cut out of it. They're using the longer ball once more. This is Campbell. Good combination between Mavet and Tostovet. Quite a variation in the style, isn't it? Spurs knocking it in interchanging between the midfield and Arsenal getting back into it by using that aerial advantage they think they've got. They've had an hour of the match, two thirds of the contests. Three goals, 2-1 in favour of Tottenham. Smith. And the substitution will now be made. Gascoigne. Who has written his notes on this semi-final but beaten by the shortness of the time since the stomach operation. And the man who replaces him is Naeem. So it's a midfield player for a midfield player, but uh, Naeem's task is to make sure that what Gascoigne has helped Tottenham achieve is not, in the end, to be wasted. Up to Campbell. This is Paul Merson. Limpa, the ball was a bit square. Wanted something to run onto then, Limpa, but the pass made him slow his stride a bit. Again, the ball in the air, though, nodded on by Campbell. Terry Venner was just making sure, tactically, the switch is all sorted out. Winterburn. Free kick against Van den Haal. The referee didn't like that challenge, neither did Groves, and neither would any neutral. questioning the referee's correctness and the lack of it from Mr. Van den Haar. Looked like a bit of a hand then by Stewart on uh, Campbell. Davis, a little bit bunched for Arsenal. They could spread it out now though. Merson took a good position. Smith shot. Torsvet was well aware it was going wide. Good snap shot from Smith because Merson tries to clip it through. It comes to him very quickly. Bit of a, a shinner. And I think Torsvet was always there. As you can see, had to hit it pretty quick. Spinning towards the goal, but uh, he was covering that far post just in case. Sedgley. Lineker. Well played, Steve Bowl, but up comes Samways. He's hit that a little harder than he intended, I suspect. But it's still two waiting in the middle. Naeem. Tottenham not committing players as they were before. I'm not sure what that achieved. Naeem. This might do a bit more. Good weaving run off the foot of bold as Lineker was cocking the trigger.
Merson. This is Allen. Lineker. Typical header falling away, but away from the far post as well. Good cross because it was one on one in the middle, and Lineker got ahead of his man by that little fallback. A little clap there from Gary Lineker because it was a good cross from Paul Allen. There was uh, he was the only choice. He whipped it in again, and Allen making runs forward. There he is, and uh, getting in crosses in the attack, but. The extra bonus is he tackles back so well for a wide player. He's a very tenacious little terror. That was surely handball. Yes. Smith looking for it and won it. Cover by Stewart, although not the best of clearances. Allen. Termination for Winterburn as well. Groves. Cross the line and a fine tackle. Oh, what a lovely little loop of the ball forward to from Mabbott after the tackle. Howells. Really finely poised the contest. Naim will get that. Oh, hard work of it. And the cross beat the two Tottenham players. And Howells is not going to get back. In fact, three of the midfield players were still up then for Tottenham. Samways. Now that Gascoigne has gone off, uh, Vinny Samways has come back into the game yet again and uh, put him close with Paul Allen to men of the match uh, overall because uh, being an important influence in, in Gascoigne's absence in the league is naturally enough gaining confidence and looking a very accomplished player today. Naeem. Slight hesitancy, good tackle by Edinburgh. Mabbots fed it well. Naeem to the left. Samway's ahead. And Lineker uses him by not using him. Good try, score! And David Seaman will be very disappointed about that. It seemed to go through his fingers. Good break by Tottenham. Very, very good running by Samways that helped the opening. But I don't think David Seaman will be too happy. Look at the run he makes. And that gives a bit of space to Lineker. To his right, but the shot seemed to go through the fingers. Well, a poor a soft goal, but as you say, Vinny Samways, look at his run there, takes ball, Tony Adams dives in, Gary Lineker gets a yard away from him, stretches for the shot, and Seaman appeared to get both hands to it, went through his fingers, and I think that expression sums up what he thinks about it. Well, a goal should be said against the balance of play, but then that was the case when Arsenal scored. Tottenham have been seen more as defenders in this second half, but they got the break and they got the fortune off uh, the England goalkeeper. Wembley can be very hard on goalkeepers, particularly in cup ties. Usually, of course, the final is the first time a semi-final here. I think we should perhaps acknowledge uh, uh, Seaman's performances for Arsenal during the season because, uh, all right, today's been a bad one for him, but uh, their league position at the top of the table on occasions, uh, I think everyone will sort of uh, acknowledge the displays he's put in. Merson. Here's a chance, Smith! Blocked by Torsford's feet. Winterburn, free kick. David Seaman down on his haunches, it's, he's alone with his thoughts. Only 14 times has he been beaten in the league. But beaten three times in this semi-final. Uh, can Arsenal come straight back? 
Davis. We've got a man up at the back. Smith, good save. And that, of course, always makes it worse for the man in the other goal when he sees his opposite number make an important save like this one. Smith got away and Bolg was waiting. Venables in consultation with Paul Walsh. <laughs> this is the third goal which has made all the difference for Tottenham. Lineker away from Adams and the shot off the fingertips of Paul David Seaman. Corner is taken and it's won by Campbell and turned away by Edinburgh. When things are going for you, Eric Torswick came for the corner, missed it on that occasion. Campbell got the header and it was knocked off the line and another day those sort of decisions will be costly. Good bounce again, won by Thomas. Bold, Campbell, still Campbell. Oh, and he hit the woodwork! Merson, and it's just a whisker away. Well, you've got to hand it to Arsenal. This is a very good comeback from going 3-1 down. Off the crossbar, back to Merson, just wide. It was a bit much to expect after the two extravagances last season, but the start that Paul Gascoigne gave to this match has been followed. It's been a good contest. Two nil-nil draws in the league. Four goals have been scored here. Free kick against Naeem. Free kick quickly taken, but not from the right place. And the man to go off deserves great applause. He's hobbling a little bit. Vinny Samways has had one of the best matches he's played for Tottenham. One to come through from the junior sides and he really has played well. Gets the applause of his manager and Paul Walsh gets into the action. Walsh who was with Liverpool in 86 and they were successful at Wembley in the final but didn't get in the squad. This is Groves out by Mavitz. Alan was caught. Campbell! Good save! Was a good save. He's a tall lad Torsmith, but uh, to get down to that good ground shot, Paul Adam just losing possession. Kevin Campbell, once he sees the sight on goal, he doesn't hesitate. But there, that big palm just touching it round the post. Arsenal still alive. And it was by Sedgley. Then Sedgley, then Stewart, Dixon, he's done well, done very well indeed if Smith can collect that, and he can. Four waiting in the middle, in comes Bold, foul on the goalkeeper. It was a foul, the previous clearance uh, again the header was Paul Stewart and the bonus of having him in midfield, although it gives him a bit more time to sort of use the ball than he does when he's up front, there's <laughs> Paul Gascon, I think. Uh, Celebrating, not surprisingly. But Paul Stewart wins such a lot of balls defensively as well. George Graham, not so happy, although he knows on Wednesday he's got a, another league match and he's got to set his mind to that. But today, I think, to be fair, Spurs are, have played very, very well and, and thoroughly deserve to be ahead and uh, be headed for a cup final in May. Cut out by Van den Haal. He played it well when Campbell came in for the challenge. Van den Haar again. On well by Lineker to Paul Allen. Paul Walsh is up as well. Arsenal outnumbered here. Allen! What an unfortunate ending from his point of view. I think he was so tired by the time he got there, he could only knock it to David Seaman and said, over you. Groves. Encouragement for the final whistle. 
We make it 90 seconds of the 90 minutes left. Dixon. Sedgley. Bowl is underneath it. Adams. Smith couldn't take it. And Paul Allen finds some more energy. Free kick. Against Kevin Campbell. His hopes, like those of his teammates, are coming back here. Are disappearing. Which is a bit of an understatement. There'll be a few more moments left. They're celebrating at the Tottenham end. They're a bit quiet at the Arsenal end, and one or two leaving. And that supporter is having more to say than anyone. And what a contrast with Anders Limpart. Been so important to Arsenal this season, the Swede. But uh, run into a spell of disappointing form for George Graham's team. David O'Leary, who uh, came here with three consecutive finals, 78, 79 and 80. But he's not to be back next month. This, in some respects, was a final rehearsal, but only half the cast would come back to appear before the Prince and Princess of Wales next month. And the half that's coming back will be wearing white. It's just now the time that Mr Lewis is allowed for a few stoppages. A good game, the referee. Naeem. Merson loses to Naeem. One against one down the middle. This is Paul Walsh. Who goes on his own. And was determined to go on his own, to Lineker's disappointment, but he didn't find the shot to match the run. And Gary Lineker shouting across at him, uh, he wanted it square, I think he's on the lookout for his hat-trick, but uh, I think at 3-1 he'll settle for just two. Stewart. Gets past Lee Dixon. Staked by Paul Davis. Allen to Walsh. And Tottenham only need to play outside. Termination from Arsenal to the finish. This is Campbell. Play on. Campbell was about to pick that up for the free kick. But in fact, the free kick has been given. Thomas. Groves, they're all calling for it forward, Groves again. Merson coming up round the back, turning header by Edinburgh, one of the unsung players in the Tottenham side who's played so well. And the skipper who just put the ball away there, Gary Mabbott has played very well as well alongside Steve Sedgley. An example to any professional player, Gary Mabbott, and he's going to bring his team back here for the final. And Gaza with the kisses and being kissed. And I look at Terry Venables. Goodness me. The first Wembley semi final has been a triumph for Tottenham Hotspur. And Paul Gascoigne wants to make absolutely sure that everyone here is aware of that. Oh, it goes over to the crowd, gives it the, the leap. But, uh, I mean, when you think he, he had the operation, what, five weeks played once in midweek, and here he was, what, playing for an hour. And there's no question he gave Spurs the launching pad to come back here in May. I'm happy. I'm now a way to get my suit measured. Yes!
ESPN Classic presents Strikers. From Dalgleish to Lineker, via Rush, Gray and Keegan. Every week, Gary Imlach and a former teammate examine the career of a great British goal scorer. He was a genius, no two ways about it. A discussion of their skills on the pitch and their personalities in the dressing room. And insights from the legends themselves. And all the skill that some players have got, Jimmy, so I've got to keep myself busy. I think a psychologist should have a field day with that, wouldn't it? Strikers, weekends at nine on ESPN Classic. SWHDI. Now with 0% finance. Text offer to 60222. Peugeot, the drive of your life. There's no need to be superstitious when you have Hiscox Home Insurance. Nearly half the claims we pay would not have been covered by a standard insurance policy. Hiscox. Extraordinary cover. This is a subject that really got me good. It's about this chewing gum. I've been chewing it to my mouth down numb. The people want taste, they want flavor. But this? And like giving a gum 10 years of labor. What is? Try them soft gum. Could this be a delicious option? Boy! Man, it's good. It's got flavor. I can taste the peppermint. So soft, I can see more. I got to tell the whole world. I see you all later. <laughs> Listen as you wash your undercrackers. My tears but is bloodin' and me think it matters! People, I think the time has come! Wrap the gum roll some try it and go! Let your tears frustrate your nation! Try the try it and must the tears up for the nation! customers get to where they want to go in life. Lloyd's TSB for the journey. Now this next game has been voted Premiership Match of the Decade apparently. Not sure who by listeners to the Today programme, possibly, or the National Plumbing Federation of Upper Volta. The entire population of the world seems to be engaged in constant voting round the clock on something or other these days. Anyway, suffice it to say that it's a pretty good match. April 1996, late in the season, and Newcastle manager Kevin Keegan fielding his usual 11 strikers against his old club Liverpool as he tries to close the gap on Manchester United at the top of the table. <laughs> Liverpool against Newcastle. 